to six hours peak sun for all system calculations? Typically, when you're doing a system, you really want to calculate the minimum um, sun for a particular area. Every area is different. Even areas within the state are different. Um, six hours, the, what we use for our calculations is, is kind of in the middle of the road. It's, it's kind of optimistic for Michigan and pessimistic for Arizona. But, um, you know, you, like places like Chicago, they have like, they're rated at like three hours of peak sun during the, the winter. And so you have to design for that three hours. So when, when I design a system, when I think about a system, I think about it should have enough battery capacity to keep the, the electronics alive for 24 hours. So I will start there. I'll say, you know, okay, I need 24 hours of battery capacity. And then, I, then we add enough solar um, capacity to match the, um, the peak sun hours. So if there's six hours, you have one, you know, have 30 watts of panel, say, and if you have three hours, you're going to need 60 watts of panel. So solar panels do uh, generate power beyond the peak sun hours, but it's difficult to really calculate that because the sun's at different angles and different latitudes, and um, it's very difficult to calculate those off-peak hours. So Basically, the peak hours are where the sun is almost directly overhead, you know, um, going through its arc. And it, it doesn't, it discounts the morning sun and the afternoon sun, basically. So to figure out how much power a panel or a panel array can generate, you take the peak sun hours times the panel watts divided by the hours of load equals the maximum load in watts that the panel can power. So if we use six hours of peak sun per day and 30 watt panel with a constant load, we can figure out how many watts we can power. So six hours times 30 watts divided by 24 equals 7.5 watts. So it's 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 uh, there's no real mysticism in here. It's pretty straightforward as far as a, a basic calculation to size the system. The problem that I see mostly from customers is they have no idea what their um, their watts are, uh, so their power draw for their equipment. A lot of times people will take a uh, AC to DC adapter that came with the equipment and they'll say, okay, this AC adapter is 12 volts, 1 amp. And so they'll say, oh, the power I need is 12 watts. That's not true because the AC adapter is, is, is made um, with a rating much, much higher than what the equipment actually draws. The AC adapter is rated for peak power, and, and when we're looking at the power that equipment draws, we're looking at average power. There's peaks, there's valleys. We use the average because that's what power actually comes out of the battery. So I can't stress enough that when we're sizing a system, we really need to have the average watts. So I've, I've made a couple customers go out and buy some 12, 12 uh $12 little voltmeters that have a current meter on them. And they, I tell them, just take off your battery connection and plug that in between your battery and your load. And it'll, re, it'll give you the average current. And then you just uh, multiply that times the battery voltage. And you'll get the watts. You'll get the average watts. So the best way to do it is actually to measure it. Um, or you can use, um, like Ubiquiti is pretty good at um, actually specifying the watts. Although they specify peak watts, they specify the watts of their equipment. So, um, But the best way really is to measure because a lot of people, they'll be putting together a system and they have all different kinds of equipment. And so measuring uh, give you the most accurate results. If you go with the little adapter uh, rating, you'll over-engineer the system and you'll end up spending too much money. So all of our UPS Pro systems, um, can, you know, you can add a wind turbine. And pe people always ask me, well, you know, well, how much can a wind turbine, how much power can it generate? And it's really very, very different for each particular site. So what I typically do is I, I size a, a remote power system with enough solar capacity 
um, to power that system all by itself and then basically tell people that the wind turbine is an insurance. Because what happens is the wind turbine will give you, you know, if you have an extended um, a couple days of storms that are blown through and you're not getting much solar power, the wind turbine will fill in. The wind turbine will also fill in, you know, during the night when the solar panel is not kicking out anything. So you might have had some, some days of really, really cloudy weather and your batteries are getting down. The wind turbine can actually kick in and charge those batteries. So basically when I'm designing a system, I design it for a standalone solar, and then the wind turbine is just an added insurance that you can add on top of it. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. If somebody knows how much wind they have at their site, like they've done measurements, then you can actually calculate how much power the wind can generate. But uh, it's wind is pretty flaky, so <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's something that you, where you really need to uh, you re really need to have some long-term measurements to be able to calculate it, or you just add it as an insurance that your system will stay up. So we have uh, three different models of wind turbines. Uh, we have a 200 watt 12 volt, a 200 watt 24 volt and a 400 watt 24 volt. Uh, the pricing is very competitive with other uh, units on the market. This unit is very, very quiet. Uh, other units on the market, when they spin, they uh, generate quite a bit of noise. But this unit is uh, just, it's, got, it's whispers. It's very, very quiet. So it's suitable for areas that are populated, that have people or animals around. Um, some of the other ones are, um, some of the other ones on the market, they're so noisy, uh, people can't stand them. They, they need to put them somewhere very remotely. Um, this wind turbine has built-in electrical overspeed protection, and it's a really easy installation. To add it to a, a UPS system, you just take the controller that comes with the wind turbine, and you, you, hook, you put that inside the, the UPS Pro box, and you wire the battery output in parallel with the, the other controller. So you wire it right to the battery, uh, just like the other controller. So the two controllers are operating in parallel. And they have, they have protection, so they don't cross talk. They don't talk to each other. Current doesn't flow in the wrong direction. So, um, so it's really easy to add a wind turbine to an existing remote pro, uh, you know, UPS Pro with solar assist or UPS Pro system. You just have to add it and, and uh, wire it up. Uh, typical applications for remote power systems are wireless base stations like access points, clients, point-to-point, -point, repeaters, backhaul. Uh, I've seen a lot of activity in cameras. Right now, a lot of people are calling up wanting remote uh, power systems for cameras. So they'll have a camera and they'll have a wireless uh, AP or a wireless bridge, and they'll want to power both those uh, camera and the wireless bridge for remote surveillance systems. Another application is sensors, uh, water levels, flow, gas pressure, temperature, oil flow through pi pipelines, all those kind of things. Um, those are typically low level, low current applications, so those those can fit really well into the you know the smaller systems. Uh, backup power is what we've been mostly talking about for critical, where people want their um, APs and their bridges and their backhauls to be operating 24/7, no downtime. And another application is remote power for like uh, uh, fences, um, electric fences, uh, uh, remote gates. A lot of people on ranches have remote gates on their property that. Uh, they use solar, they can use solar to operate the gate. And remote lighting, especially LED lighting, is getting really popular. Uh, so that, that's a remote power product.